the Mako Shark, the ocean's king of speed. Take it off! A vicious hunter. Look at the size of him! And one of the boldest sharks on Earth. Hey, hey, watch out! But could it also be growing to be one of the biggest? It was something from another planet, something from another time. It was just a monster. Bombs away. Now, a new expedition sets off. Or if you're down to 1,000 meters, it's sharks. To track down the elusive beast. Somewhere where all those sharks, she's sitting. Off the coast of Rhode Island. You ready? Yeah. Underwater cinematographer Joe Romero. And now it's just the waiting game that just drives you nuts. Is tracking down a monster. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> the Mako shark. The fastest shark in the ocean with bursts up to 60 miles per hour. The apex predator averages eight feet in length and 400 pounds. But recent reports indicate that Makos could be capable of growing to nearly double that size. I've dived with a lot of big Makos in my career, but sharks don't stop growing, like fish don't stop growing, so there's always a story of this larger fish. All right. And I think I'm still looking for the largest of the large Makos. Joe's been filming and studying Makos for more than 15 years. Oh, Mako just arrived! Everything about this animal is amazing. Speed up a little bit! Now, the animal moves fast. It can move five to eight body lengths a second. Keep an eye on it! Feels like you're seeing a jet plane. There he is, there he is! captured rare footage of one Mako attacking another. Oh my god, one just bit the other one! The Mako shark has like a very complex, delicate social behavior with other Mako sharks. They don't really like each other. And he's even hand-fed one of the largest Makos ever caught on film. Look how big that shark is! <laughs> Dude, that's like white shark size, oh <laughs> my god! <laughs> That shark right up, is probably yeah. one of the rarest sharks you will ever see in your entire life. Not just because of species, but size. <laughs> now, the Mako's become endangered. Hi, girlfriend. And the giant ones, a rumored class of Mako's more than 12 feet in length, could hold clues to their survival. Documenting a giant Mako on film is scientifically important and finding the biggest ones that exist on the planet. That's like my main goal. Because we don't even know if this animal will be around in the next 10 years. If Joe can locate and film one of the monsters, he could reveal new information on the species. But finding one is rare. It's much harder to find a shark that's trying to be hidden than a shark that's bold. And these big, large sharks know how to hide. To tackle the challenge, Joe teamed up with his wife, Ready? marine biologist Lauren Ramiro. Today, they're meeting a fellow diver who has a lead on where to find these rare beasts. I went to the Azores to photograph blue sharks. Mm -hmm. My last dive day, from the corner of my eye, I saw this enormous thing come off the bottom, up like a missile. Two seconds later, this thing was four feet away from my left shoulder. Wow. Look at that monster. Look at that. There are these moments where you sometimes see an image and you wonder, like, how's this possible? Oh, Look at wow. this thing. Those teeth are the size of my fingers. You know, everybody can talk a great story, but when someone shows you an image of something, it kind of drives it home. The giant Mako Joe hand-fed was around 11 feet. But a specimen caught in Italy in the 1880s 
was measured to be in excess of 13 feet. Michael's sighting tops that. We estimated it to be about 14 feet long. It was something from another planet, something from another time. Yeah. It was just a monster. This is one of the only known photos of a Mako this size, and video of one is non-existent. Trying to find one of these guys or girls? Yes. <laughs> You ready for the Azores? Mm -hmm. I'm ready. You're ready. <laughs> I'm ready. When I think of a 14-foot mako, most people would say it's a white shark. Like, when these makos get to that large of a size, they actually look like they could be white sharks. Commonly thought of as the king of the ocean, great whites are assumed to be the top predatory shark. But when the two species meet in the water, something surprising happens. If we had a white shark and a mako, for sure the mako would win. The white shark will swim away. The white shark has good reason to flee. What it has to do with is behavior. A white shark's a tremendous predator. But a mako shark is cunning. The Mako's paralyzing signature move, the tail sever. This animal is designed to maim, to take out your Achilles heel, to go after something to cripple you. A massive shark has got it! It's to make it so you can't fight. Look at that tail, it's hanging on by a thread. Doesn't have to be stronger than you, just has to be faster than you and know where to hit you. And that shark knows where to hit it. The search for a giant mako brings Joe and Lauren to the middle of the Atlantic. It's here that three major tectonic plates meet, erupting nine rugged volcanic islands from the ocean depths, the Azores. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the If there was a perfect place on Earth where giant makos existed, it would be the Azores. There are these amazingly epic Jurassic sort of islands like no other place on Earth. Below the waves just off the coast, the slopes of the islands plummet, forcing up nutrient-rich water from miles below and triggering life on a massive scale. The water temperature is set perfectly. There's tremendous animal life migrating past. It's just set up like a hotbed for this sort of predator. The islands also hold a deeper meaning for Joe. It's home. I was born in the Azores. And really, my obsession with sharks and my love of the ocean all started here. It's just embedded in the culture. Francisque! So, filming a giant mako in the Azores would mean a lot to me. That connection that I have with that shark and this place just mean a lot to me personally. The team will have three days to search the surrounding waters. But the depths here offer a giant mako a staggering amount of water to hide in. Joe, look at you. To find their needle in a haystack, Joe and Lauren are heading to a blue shark hotspot. Makos and blue sharks, they kind of overlap on certain fronts. They go after similar prey. They occupy a similar temperature zone. They occupy a certain seasonality. So you find these sharks kind of going hand in hand with each other to find the blue sharks they hope will bring them face to face with a giant mako, they enlist the help of local shark expert, George Fontes. Watch that. Here I am. 